Okay, friends, let's talk eyelashes, shall we? There's nothing worse than going through the entire creation process and your girl is perfect and then slap it on the eyelashes just to screw the whole thing up. So let's dive into the anatomy of the eyelash and how we can use specific tools to make killer eyelashes so that we can make amazing mixed media eyeballs on our gorgeous whimsical girls and our art journals and on canvas. Are you ready? And I have an awesome five page PDF resource that will help you so much. I'm gonna show it to you, we're gonna break it down and then we're gonna practice together. Let's dive in. There are three things to consider when drawing eyelashes, but let's back it up and just talk about them on a surface level before we start to draw them. So one is directionality, and this is something that, this is the biggest thing that most people get wrong. So when most people, and this is just what, what I've seen among my students, and it's super normal, I'm not calling anyone out, everybody does it. Here's our simple eye. People will, as far as directionality goes, they might have everything going this way. And say, go this way. Uh, usually people also draw them straight. So there's a funny thing that happens with eyelashes in nature, and that is they switch directions halfway across the eyeball. So while this might be correct, this directionality, this is a right eye, and the left eye would be this way. Why this is correct, when you hit the center of the eye, there's a directional switch. These ones then <laughs> go the other way, which is super confusing, okay? So it's really, really important. And they look, right, they're going in the exact opposite direction. So I like to remember this in terms of uh, doing parentheses. So if you start with parentheses on either side, and that's top and bottom lash, by the way, this is the direction you need to go in. And then when you hit the middle, you're gonna switch. Again, that's top and bottom and left to right. So in the first page of my five page PDF that you can grab, just let me know in the comments if you want it, you, you can see here these arrows are showing you the directionality and then their center line represents the fact that you gotta switch directions. And we'll take a look at finished drawings after this so you can see exactly what I mean. Okay, so that's number one is directionality and that's super important. The second one is pressure. Now this refers to less of what eyelashes look like and how they're made and more in terms of how we're gonna use our tools to create them. There's a really important flick that happens with using our ride, writing or painting or drawing instruments. And without the flick, you don't get the right flare. So we'll talk about that and I'll demonstrate that more when we get to that part, point. The last thing to consider is that your eyelashes are actually different lengths. And that is kind of goes along with this look where all of these lashes tend to be the same length. But in reality, you have some long lashes and then you have some smaller lashes and they're really, they're really quite different. Everyone is kind of random. You can have little baby lashes. You even have little rows of lashes, which is kind of creepy. It actually reminds me of like a shark's mouth where you have like different rows. It's very similar to these lashes. So you have different rows of them. Now that's getting really, really nitty gritty. And if we were doing a super highly realistic portrait using graphite or using very fine nibbed pens, that would come into play. With our mixed media portraits, we're not, we don't really need to worry about that, but I'm just highlighting that on my sheet to make you aware of really how complex our eyelashes really, really are. And there's another subtlety too, which again, I don't deliberate very much if I'm doing large scale mixed medium portraits. However, if you are doing large scale, this will actually come up, which is this. The bottom lashes especially grow out of the bottom line. This is super basic. But, and so here's our center line, but there is what's called a wet line here. 
And so if you're struggling to make your eyes appear more realistic, if you want to go more to like semi-realism from whimsical, so to speak, you can use, you can leave a space here for the wet line and that will take your mixed media faces and make them a little bit more realistic looking. You can totally skip that if you want to, but I just wanted to draw your attention to that in case becoming more realistic is important to you. Same thing on the top, but I've noticed in illustration and mixed media projects. If you skip the top, this tends to get lost in a lot of makeup looks and in, I'll show you when I go to draw them, how that kind of goes away. But again, that lower one, you can definitely emphasize and it does make kind of a cool impact. Okay, so as far as this, page one of this cheat sheet, you have directionality, super important. Pressure, we're gonna get to in a second. And again, you do vary your lengths and that will lead to a little bit better of results. Okay, so what I just wanna talk about some of examples before we get into actually practicing. So the practice sheet is page two of your PDF. And page three, four, and five, I just wanted to, these are just really fun. These are all copyright free images um, that show different examples. And these are probably actually more in line with what the yours will look like when you're doing mixed media portraits versus drawing. We're not using pencils very much to do lashes and mixed media portraits, right? We're using markers or paint pens and that's, and, and those, I, those things. And I, again, I'll show you my favorite tool in just a second, but I, I would like these examples with the makeup because it shows very clearly that your makeup is a completely separate look than your eyes and your eyelashes. Specifically, that eyelid line is super important and it's really nice to actually draw that loud and clear on your mixed media portraits. And you can have really huge ones. I'll show you an example of that in a minute. And you can have very small ones, but also varying that lid line, which again is separate from the eye, will really, if you struggle with, a lot of people struggle with their mixed media projects looking all exactly the same. So if you want to start making a lot of different varying faces, a really easy way to do that is by changing up the eyelid line. You can even notice in these, like these are even all the same. This one's a little bit bigger. This one has none, so you could put one in there. That one is kind of the same. These are all pretty generic. So I'll show you some of mine. That's a, that's a line that I love to mess around with and I'll show you what an impact it makes. Okay, so here is my mixed media portrait of Marilyn Monroe, as you do. <laughs> and this, uh, full, this full length tutorial is available in the Mixed Media Society. Actually, all of these that I'm about to show you are a part of my Mixed Media Society art club. So obviously you can see how huge and gorgeous and shiny those eyelids are, right? That is a huge sweeping line. But it's sometimes you don't make the connection between, oh, that's this line right here. Like that completely transforms your character, right? So there's Marilyn. And then we have uh, one of mine who's not famous in any way, but she also has quite pronounced eyelids. Oh, speaking of which, I also check the eye in the corner of your screen, the card, because that will lead you to an actual mixed media eye lesson that I've taught previously here on my mixed media YouTube channel. And it, is, it gives this exact look. And it's you can see there's a lovely highlight on the eyelid and it creates that very round appearance of the eye and it really, it's just, it's gorgeous. It creates a little shimmer. Um, if you're wondering about highlights, my last video I published on YouTube was all about adding highlights to your mixed media portraits. So check that out. I put a link here and in the description box to all everything I'm referring to as well. Um, here is another girl that I teach in the Mixed Media Society, and this one has a little bit of a smaller, thinner lid, right? So it changes it. Now these, her eyes are actually pretty wonky. They're a little bit different. So this, I could have had this one match that one and vice versa. Actually, it's kind of a great example because I have one that is thin and one that's a little bit different. And it really transforms the face. So keep that little sneaky eyelid in mind because that can really, again, have a huge impact on your eyes when you're doing your mixed media portraits. Okay, so back to pages three, four, and five of the PDF. You can use these just for inspiration. So you can see in a lot of these, when you get to the corner of your eye, it's a little bit heavier. I tend to do my 
drawings and illustrations the same way where I do a little bit heavy. Sometimes I'll have a little cat eye in the corner and then the rest is sort of quote unquote normal. Let me show you an example of that. All right, here are two examples when I've done, I've done just that, where again, you can see, especially this sultry look, this is another mixed media society portrait. Um, we are making the top line very thick. So it's kind of a two in one. It makes it look like she's wearing lovely heavy eyeliner, which I love. And then again, you can see the clear directionality switch as you go from left side to right, left side to right. But I tend to do heavier and I'll show you exactly what tools I use to make those different marks. Um, super quick and easy, super, super quick and easy. Here's another recent project I've uh, just, <laughs> this one is a lot bigger than the right one and that does happen too. And just goes to show you like, no matter how many times I've done mixed media portraits, I still make mistakes. My, my lines are not always exactly correct. It happens to everybody, but also keep in mind, and I hope this makes you feel better, that like eyelashes in nature are all crazy. Like there are some crazy looking, looking lashes. Um, here's another drawing I did for my Fun Fab Drawing Club students. Oh no, sorry, this is Celtic Collective, where you can see too, the top line is rather thick and that one is thicker than this one. And then she has the smaller one. So I actually used two different pens to make that look. And again, I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, that's still life, it's nothing to do with eyelashes. <laughs> and here's one where this was a girl, this is also for, this one is for my Fun Fab Drawing Club. No, she's a girl and not like a sexy mixed media portrait, so I wanted to make sure her lashes were smaller, thinner, but she's still a girl, so I still want them to be kind of long to give her a little bit more feminine look. And so you can see, she does not have a very thick upper lash and she has very kind of sweet wisps of eyelashes. So you can make your character look younger, your face look younger by having fewer eyelashes, kind of minimizing that look. Here's another, um, another project from my Celtic Collective Art Club where she has pretty thick lashes. It's sort of uniform. She's got thick lashes on the top and the bottom and it's a totally different look. So she doesn't have really crazy ones on the all the way right or left. They're like crazy redistributed or throughout, right? And notice the ones in the middle are dead straight up and down, okay? And then again, they switch. So directionality, pressure and varying the lengths are all things that are page one of that PDF to help you remember. And then these ones are really fun and I hope they inspire you to copy some of these and see what they look like. What if you had the top ones like crowded and heavier and the bottom ones were long and sparse? Like these are all things you get to mess around with. I like this one in particular, I would really love to try. And some of these are a little bit like thinner. So let's talk how you actually make these. So page two of this PDF, there's no strings attached. This is PDF for everyone. I make these for my club students, but on occasion, because I do so many YouTube videos, I will also um, just be able to, to release them to anybody who's interested. So this is a little practice page. Again, I made this, I made this for my Fun Fab Drawing Club students. Um, and these are my favorite eyelash making tools. I have one is the Pocket Pentel brush pen. I use it for 100% of my faces, like period, which is pretty much 90% of all my project projects ever. So it's lovely because it has these, these are actually bristles. I love Pentel, it's the best brand ever. And um, all my favorite pens are from Pentel. But that's rather thick and juicy, but it also has this little sister, I like to call it, which is these are sign pens, which are also by Pentel. And they also are come with these little individual bristles, which make very realistic eyelashes. And the funnest part about those sign pens is they actually come in a lovely rainbow of color. I haven't done an actual video on these, but I use them. You can ask my club members. I use them all the time. They're also water soluble, so you can use them in amongst your watercolors and your watercolor pencil projects and activate them with water as well. So they're a really neat trick. This brown color, this light brown color is how I did, how I was able to get, oh, actually it was my dark brown color. This one is how I was able to get those very fine, adorable lashes on this girl. So if I didn't have these pens, I honestly don't actually know what I would have used because the pencil would have been too thick. 
So yeah, that brush, the brush aspect of these pens coupled with, well, the need for drawing awesome lashes is what gives us awesome lashes. So you can take your cheat sheet and this is where the pressure comes into play. It's when you're doing this and you really need to practice, especially with these pens. These tools are, because they're so pressure dependent, you really need to practice to get good at them. Because if you're pressing down hard, you can make a really wide mark. And if you're barely pressing down, that look how thin that line is. That's bananas. So you have to get to know the feeling of your brush. And we also need to bring in that directionality. So again, directionality, pressure, varying lengths. It's a lot, it's a lot more complicated than you would think. So a way to kind of warm up to use this sheet is what I like to do is because I'm right-handed, I like to do all the right hand eyes first. And this is where I'm gonna practice my pressure. And a really fun way to use this pen to practice pressure making eyelashes is to do a whole row of cat eyes. Now sometimes if I'm scared to do, I'm like, I really don't wanna ruin this piece, I spent hours on it, I will just do cat eye and be done. Because it's gorgeous. And you can really be done. So I, you can, oh, see, I need to practice. I'm out of practice. But you can swash just doing a swish. Now this time around, I'm gonna do very light pressure here and then increasingly apply pressure and then that flick at the end. It's like, okay, that's a little bit better. Let's try it again. Light. And then we're about halfway through. I'm gonna start, start, and then I put all the pressure down. And then you got that, the flick up, that's that pressure point is what gives you that, that flink up in the right direction. Flink, that's a word, I'm, I swear. Maybe you want like heavy across the whole top. You can do that too. And that, that time it was like, uh, I was kind of like pulling it down a little bit. But you, these are all great eyelashes without even doing a secondary lash. And then this one, sometimes, this is a great way to fix a lot. Of, if you have like that startled eye look, uh, my biggest cheat and easiest fix, all you do is you take this line and you bring it down. Okay, and that will instantly give a sultry look and you'll also correct that crazy wide-eyed look. You can also come and like say, make this like super fat and very, very the whole thing. It's very like Adele circa 2006 or whatever, that, whatever makeup she used to wear all the time. So doing just the cat eyes alone, and then again, you really need to practice. It feels super, it's totally different when you go left. It's a way different ball game. Look how much more curved I was able to get. It looks very different. So this is why I made this practice sheet so that my members could actually practice. I also have this, if Drawing Club members, if you're watching this, this is also, you have pages in your workbook as well. Okay, see how different mine are? Because my flick is coming from the different direction. So I, I should practice more to kind of make mine more uniform. Because obviously they're not. <laughs> Whoop. Okay, but yeah, it will help you do lots in a row. Okay. So that's my cat eye cheat, which is great for fixing problems, adding the look of makeup, and just making a beautiful girl. Now something else you could do is, and this is what I just I do do a lot, is sometimes I will do a single cat eye, and I'll switch to my smaller one now, and the rest of them I will do with the smaller brush. Now this is the same issues as the pocket pen tell in that it has this brush, the same brush. So you can do wide, but that's the widest that one that can go. And then again, you can do super duper skinny as well. So they're just relatively fat and skinny. But this one is also has a, a much longer tip relative to its thickness. So also requires some practice and more of a the practice comes really into play using this tool when it comes to the, the directionality and making them really curved. It's hard, actually. So you can practice, practice lots, and you can also 
Remember that, that little wet line I was talking about? So you can draw a second line and then you can practice. I love this one, especially for the lower lashes. And that's another thing I often do. I'll do the top lashes with my pocket pen tool brush and then I'll switch to my sign brush and do the, the lower ones with just this one. That's my biggest, these are all my secrets, letting them out. So this one, a lot of times too, I will use the pocket pen tool on the top and then I'll use this one for kind of in between because remember the lashes are varying lengths. So you have a more, you know, crowded look. You can also put your lash, you can also use the pocket pen tail on the bottom for sure. You can do a heavy makeup there. So fun. They look like the little crab legs. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, so you can have a super blast using this worksheet to help to help you practice all of those things directionality pressure and varying lengths and of course you can add makeup and again if you're having trouble deciding where the makeup goes you can look to these worksheets for help in figuring that out and reminding you like that again is separate. That used to confuse me when I was first learning eyes. I was super confused by that eyelid. Like, is it connected? Is it not connected? Um, and how does that go with the makeup? So I like this page especially because it helps reinforce to me like, okay, the makeup is separate. And if you um, want to mess around with this more, I have, this is from my uh, Learn to Draw Art Deco style book. This is also a tutorial I have making these 1920s smoking eyes. This is really fun. You'll recognize the tools I just made, but in addition to my mixed media eye tutorial, this one is a tutorial over on my drawing channel. So this is a really fun one. So I will also um, drop a link in the description box for you so you can learn how to do that one. And now that I have given you my top secret tips on how to make mixed media portraits have awesome lashes. I do want to invite you to a free mixed media event I'm having at, that's happening this April 28th, 2024. It's totally free. It's going to be streamed right here on my YouTube channel. And um, there's information about that in the description box below as well. But we're going to be making her from scratch. So this is classic, classic mixed media. I have a traceable so you don't need to worry about drawing. Um, she's so big, it's really hard to get her all in <laughs> one shot but you don't need to worry about drawing I've done the drawing part for you you can transfer her on and I will show you step by step how to make that entire beautiful masterpiece okay I for sure just went over a ton so just rest assured that everything I mentioned is below in the description box for you and if you want to subscribe so you don't miss out on any tips I publish new videos every other week. That would be great. I would super appreciate it. And let me know in the comments section below what other mixed media portrait tips you would like me to cover and I will include them with the series playlist. You can click the link right here and go see the other videos in that series. Thanks so much for watching.